The internet has led to an unprecedented change in the way in which we see media today. From the democratization of things like citizen journalism to the creation of new platforms like whatever the heck this is. Today, I want to look at one in particular. I want to take a look at podcasting because never before have we seen such a availability for the broadcast of certain ideas. Podcasts enable people to connect regardless of location, regardless of time, and perhaps most importantly, regardless of limitations on that time. So join me, if you would, for a look at the world of podcasting. If you can really read, you can read way faster than you can listen. Mm -hmm. So reading is more effective, except that, and this is what's cool about podcasts and, and what's, what's game changing about them, I would say, is we can't read while you're driving. Yeah. Sure. You can't read while you're doing the dishes or exercising. And yeah. so all of a sudden with the podcast world, people have all this time that was used maybe listening to music, which is fine, right? Mm -hmm. But lots of people now are listening to like difficult podcasts. Yeah, well, educational you know, Yes, yes, and long, detailed mm -hmm. discussions about political issues that was never possible with television or even with radio for that mm -hmm. matter. Podcasting is a natural evolution of the public broadcasts that were first pioneered in 1910 by Lee DeForest. No longer limited to the large production crews found at television or radio stations, Program hosts like Edward Munro and Walter Cronkite are now able to surface from anywhere around the globe. The dissemination of media content is no longer limited to those who have access to large radio towers and satellite dishes. The internet has allowed the layman to gain access to the same audience once reserved for the mainstream media. Even if the only thing available is a shoddy internet connection and a $2 microphone, Platforms like YouTube, Twitch, SoundCloud, and Spotify enable anyone with a passion to connect with an audience, and these audiences can be vast. The Joe Rogan Experience, one of the internet's most popular podcasts, garners over 90 million downloads per month. American Belarusian entrepreneur Gali Vaynerchuk spoke with Joe Rogan in 2017 about the incredible power afforded to those who can learn to utilize the internet as a means to reach new audiences. This is an amazing time, though, to get a message out there. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, you know, the communication infrastructure of society is incredibly interesting right now. Yeah. I mean, look what you and I are doing. Do you know, I mean, like, if you map what you're doing right now, like, it's insane. You, you, you basically had to give up all the economics to the biggest radio show, station in the world. Like, like, everybody can reach so many people and of course everybody's gonna, head's gonna go to what's going on in politics and what's yeah, going on, it's true. I mean, it, the, the most powerful thing about it is everyone has access to it now. There's 100%. nothing keeping anyone from starting an Instagram page and just putting up little videos every day of how they feel and how they think. And it might only affect one person, it might affect a thousand people, it might get to a million people, and it builds. Today, thousands of people upload their content to the World Wide Web, hoping that somebody out there might find the bottle that they cast into the ocean. But podcasting isn't just about entertainment. But podcasting doesn't have to be. But podcasting doesn't just have to be about entertainment. All right, look, I don't actually know how to transition the video cleanly from this part into the next, so I thought I'd just be candid with you for a sec. One of the things that's important about podcasting is the word itself. You know, I thought that it had been around for a long time, but it hasn't. It's actually a relatively young term. It was coined by a journalist called Ben Hammersley in 2004 from the words iPod and broadcast. So iPod, broadcast, pod, broad. Nope or podcast, podcast. So that's where the actual word comes from. So intrinsic to the actual nature of broadcasting is this sort of ease of access and ease of dissemination of the actual content. But like I was just saying, it's not the only thing that it's been used for. It is actually used in a lot of things for news and it's used in like 
to more official capacities. So as awkward as this transition is, that's what I'm going to use to go into the next part of the video. So here we go. One of the biggest differences between podcasts and other forms of audio broadcasting like radio is the ability to choose when you actually want to listen to your chosen topic. Unlike radio, where there are set programs that need to run to the station's schedule, podcasts can drastically alter their length if the discussion and those involved allow it. In a study by the British Journal of Educational Technology, researchers Howard Harris and Sung Min Park found that podcasting has the potential to change teaching and learning experiences significantly. They found that the freedom allowed by podcasts could help facilitate the organisation and delivery of information in a way that is tailored to a user's individual preference and learning style. These remarks are similarly backed by Simon B. Healison, who found that many students experience podcasts as a genuine improvement to their study environment, and that they use this new tool rationally as a supplement to their study activities. In the Turkish Online Journal of Distance Education, Mark Lee and Anthony Chan found that podcasting was able to help those who were suffering from anxiety as a result of the effects born from isolation in rural communities around Australia. In a study performed by Marco Lazzari for Computers and Education, it was noted that students who engaged in creating podcasts and other media presentations found greater engagement with course materials and noted an increase to the engagement they had with their courses. These results suggested that involving students in producing their own short lessons could be an effective way to integrate traditional teaching, at least for courses related to multimedia communication and production. Well. Go me, I guess. But what else is there that differentiates podcasts from other forms of media? Is there something to a podcast's DNA which establishes itself as unique from other forms like radio and television? Well, yeah. Because the ability to pause, rewind and re-engage with a topic at any time is really quite important. It enables a broadcaster to engage with an audience on topics that can be pretty difficult, whereas news delivered via radio and news delivered by TV has to contend with the bandwidth that they're actually given. Podcasts don't have to do that, which means that they can take on some rather dark topics. Jason, can you tell us what sort of weapons were stolen from your home? Yeah, so I had uh, all four of my guns stolen. I had a 3006 pump action rifle. I had a 22 caliber bolt action rifle. I had an under over Maroku shotgun and I had a, um, a single barrel Mosberg shotgun, which is my great grandfather's. They took some. Um, coins off the top of the fridge, just loose coins. True crime podcasts aren't anything new, but utilizing them in order to help police with ongoing investigations exemplifies the specialized power that podcasts have. That's all we've got time for, unfortunately. Simply put, Podcasts enable a greater level of diversity with their ability to tackle different niche problems and an audience member's prerogative. They can provide another tool for broadcasters to connect, which enables more content for a well-informed audience. Thank you very much for watching.